So in some sense, uh, what we're saying is the, these plants or these fungi can produce compounds for, for a defensive purpose. They don't want to be eaten. That is almost the opposite of this other thing that a lot of people have asked me about actually just in, in my life, but I've never really uh, art, had someone like you articulate. There's this uh, idea that comes originally from Terence McKenna called the stoned ape hypothesis. I'm wondering if you've heard of that and how, as an evolutionary biologist, you would look at uh, that way of thinking. Um, yeah, I think, frankly, I like it, but I think it's unlikely to be true is, is what I would say. For one thing, if, if what we're trying to explain is the spectacular growth of the human brain and the mind that comes along with it, we actually do have a pretty good idea of why that happened. And it has to do with something called ecological dominance, where human beings at some point become their own biggest ecological influence. In other words, most creatures face a, uh, a, a, a dominant factor of, uh, for example, the ability to find food. But for human beings, at some point, ecological dominance causes the success of one group to be most, uh, most affected by its competitors for resources. And so what you get is an ecological and evolutionary arms race. And that arms race is won by people who figure out more clever solutions to problems. And this, of course, leads very directly to the evolution of language because the way to um, escape the linearity of intellect, basically, if you, you know, don't want to just add more and more brain, but you want to get more and more power out of the brain you've got, the way to do it is to get brains to plug into each other in some literal sense and to get emergent cognition where you know the sum of two people's cognition is exceeded by what happens if you allow their brains to exchange ideas which you know we don't think about it as the miracle that it is but the uh, the ability of one person to vibrate the air molecules between them and another person and for some membrane in the ear to wobble back and forth and for an abstract idea to actually be successfully transmitted by that process from one literally one brain into another is remarkable. But what that allows us to do is it allows us to problem solve in a uniquely human way. So does, um, does the existence of entheogens play any role in that story? It does. We know that um, most cultures have some mechanism for accessing what we are arguing is the dream state in order to uh, open doors of perception, as it were. Um, but is it that these entheogens were the driving force? Almost certainly not. Almost certainly it was the fact that the arbiter of evolutionary success is suddenly the cleverness of competing groups uh, that creates the arms race that causes the brain to be elaborated and then causes brains to plug into each other to get emergent cognition.